Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotac. And with Apple Intelligence releasing just a few weeks ago with iOS 18.1, Apple brought the first set of features with things such as writing tools, the new look for Siri, and much more. However, the second set of Apple Intelligence features are set to be much more exciting. So I thought we'd go over everything new with Apple Intelligence with its second set of features releasing with iOS 18.2. Now, the first thing is Image Playground. Many people have been waiting to try this out, and this allows you to create images. Here's a few that I've created. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, but maybe we'll go in and create something new. So you'll see it says describe an image or add a suggestion from the list. So you can add a picture of yourself, and then you can scroll through. Maybe you want to add something such as a birthday with an adventure. And we'll give it just a moment here and then it will process some sort of photo for us and you'll see it sort of continues to create it using the neural processor and we can scroll through and if we don't like any of these we can change it so we could give it a thumbs up a thumbs down or let's change this to summer instead and get rid of adventure and then it will create something new for us there we go. There's something a little bit different and it seems to create a smile just about every time. Sometimes it's very different. Sometimes it's not, but for whatever reason, it seems to create a smile, even though you're not showing your teeth in the photo that you may actually present to it. So that's something you'll see where it just continues to create something new, or you can create something without a photo of yourself. You'll see, here's a few others that I've tried, but let's try something different. Maybe a house on the beach with a sports car next to it and let's see what it comes up with so we'll give it just a second to create this and there we go you can't use things that are well known maybe a porsche or an aston martin or ferrari or toyota anything that's well known you can't actually use it won't allow you to create it but this gives you an idea of what it can do you could say at sunset you could say anything here with any of these different options starry night Again, we'll give it a second to create it. So this is in the evening, same sort of photo. So it's pretty nice. I think they'll improve it over time. And of course you can send these to yourself, to your friends or family or whoever. To go along with this, we get something called Genmoji where we can create our own emoji when we're messaging someone. I think this is probably going to be a bigger feature, but if we go into messages within your keyboard, you'll see I created a Genmoji already, a star with a hat on, a star that was smiling with stars in its eyes. Tap the little emoji keyboard icon in the bottom left, go over to where your stickers are and you'll see the ones you've already created. Press and hold on them and you can see a description of them here as well. So anything you've created, it will give you a description, but you can create something else as, as well. So you could rearrange it, create a new emoji, but let's go ahead and make something new. So maybe a smiley, let's try smiling face looking left. So you could create anything you want to use as an emoji. So give it just a moment. And it says some may create an unexpected result. Sometimes they're going to look like what we've already got. So, with a hat. Sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want, but again, try it a few different times and then you may get the result you want. So you can scroll through and see a couple different variants. Sometimes they look identical, but again, that gives you an idea of how it works. And then we can bring that up into here and send our little emoji. So we have Genmoji built into the keyboard. I think a lot of people will use this once they realize they can create just about anything. So instead of maybe a thumbs up, or a peace sign or a thank you, you could create whatever you'd like. And this goes along with what we have on the iPad within notes using the Apple pencil and within notes, maybe you've sketched something here and you want to create a better version of this image and then add it to a presentation, tap your little toolbar here and then go down to the bottom and you've got this new magic wand tool. So if you tap on magic wand, you can just circle whatever you want to change and then describe it. And we'll just say a flower. There we go. Tap the send button and then it creates a flower based off my drawing. So it's in the same sort of orientation. We can try something different. We could change the color if we want to. If we tap on this, a flower that is blue, then you can change it to work however 
you want. So give it just a second, it will create that. And now we have a blue version of the same flower. So this works really great. You could create a house, a car, anything you want to sketch, a gazebo, and it will create it for you so you can add it to a presentation. So using the magic wand tool, basically circle whatever you want and it will try and duplicate that. And then of course you can change it as well. So again, go back in and it will create it all over again. With the second set of Apple intelligence features, we also gain chat GPT integration. Now this isn't something you have to use. You can continue to use Siri just how you were, but it has been integrated directly into Siri if you want to use it. Go into your settings if you're using Apple Intelligence, go to Apple Intelligence and Siri, scroll down and you'll see ChatGPT. Under ChatGPT and within the ChatGPT options you can leave it disabled. If you enable it you can just use it without signing in or if you want to use it with more queries available you can actually sign in and then create an account and upgrade to ChatGPT+. This isn't something you have to use but if you want to use ChatGPT with Siri it will send your information from here to there and you can just ask Siri to use it. Now again you don't have to actually pay for this. This is something that you can choose to use or not use at all. And then you can have Siri confirm that you want to actually send it to chat GPT. So if we go back home here and maybe we can go into Siri, we can say, what's the weather today? It will give us that information, but we could also ask chat GPT the same thing, even though we don't really need to ask chat GPT what the weather is today. It says working with chat GPT, it will take just a moment and then give us that information. So it's actually sending it directly to them and then giving the full sort of overall update of the weather. So again, you may have to ask specific locations, but that gives you an idea of how it works. So the same is true when you go into your writing tools. So we can use that chat GPT integration in writing tools. And if we go to our Apple intelligence tools, you'll see some new options here. So not only can we describe a change to whatever we've made, that's something new with this update, but if we go to compose, we can then compose with chat GPT. So we could say, compose a list of iPhone 16 pro features, then send it. It will take a moment and it should give us information using chat GPT. So again, there we go. So it's talking about design and display sleek edge to edge performance, camera, battery and charging. And it's put it all in sort of this nice integrated list or outline. So again, other features, face ID security, improved water and dust resistance, although that's not an improvement over the previous one. So you may have to check some of the information. And again, you can use chat GPT with notes or not use it at all. If you don't want to, you can use it for maybe a recipe, ask chat GPT, how to make macaroni and cheese. And again, it's going to ask saying working with chat GPT, that's how, you know, and now it's given the ingredients, the instructions and more. So again, you can use this or not use it at all. You can use it with Siri and Siri actually sounds a little bit better in this update. So they continue to make it sound smarter, a little bit more intelligent and sound a little different. Let me give you an example. Siri, what's the weather looking like next week? Next week, we can expect rain followed by partly cloudy skies. And finally, some clear skies. Daytime temperatures will fluctuate between 57 and 73 degrees with overnight lows between 36 and 58 degrees. Are there any F1 races next week? There is no race between Sunday and November 16th, 2024. The 2024 Las Vegas Grand Prix is scheduled for Sunday, November 24th, 2024. At 1 a.m. Something else we're gaining is visual intelligence. Press and hold camera control and you can get in and use visual intelligence. For example, here's an iPhone 14 Pro Max. We'll place it behind here and go ahead and search for it. It uses the camera to search for it. And this is something we've seen on other phones for quite some time. You can see here some things are a little bit wrong here. It thinks it's a 14 Pro Max here, but also shows a 12 Mini because it's very similar to those phones. We can again go back and ask. Again, it scans it says working with chat GPT this time, and it will give us more information about it. So it says the sleek design and powerful camera system of this smartphone, make it ideal for photography enthusiasts. So this is sort of a general overview, but as we continue to use it, it tends to get a little bit better. If I bring in an older iPhone 10 R, we'll bring that in here again. Let's search and see if it gets it right. It says searching Google and this time it got it right because it's more of a unique sort of device. Again, let's try it with ask. 
Sorry, I couldn't get an answer from ChatGPT. So sometimes you may run into that issue and it won't get an answer. So I may have run out of actual amounts to ask it, but either way, it's something you can do. And I think with visual intelligence, one of the best features is being able to identify something that you have with maybe a landmark. Maybe you're traveling and you want more information about something that interests you. Well, you could take a photo of it or you could just search when you press the button. That's something that's very helpful and I think will be much improved in the future. Also a new option you get with Apple Intelligence is type to Siri. It looks different even though we've had that feature for a while. In the control center, you'll see a new icon for that. Go into it and it just looks a little different. So they've added an additional control instead of double tapping at the bottom. I did want to note that when you're using visual intelligence, the phone gets extremely hot. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you're using something with Apple intelligence, it seems to use a lot of processing power. We also may gain on-screen awareness with this update. Now we don't know hundred percent if that's going to be brought right away or if it's something that's coming later next year, but visual intelligence will sort of identify something on screen using Siri and then sort of understand what's going on so that you can interact with your device a little bit more. Now this update with Apple intelligence's second version is going to be coming to more countries as well, such as Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the United Kingdom. Then it will roll out in different places around the world as well. With Apple intelligence and the second set of features, they're set to launch with iOS 18.2 in the first week of December. According to different leaks from Mark Gurman, we're expecting December 2nd. He actually got the iOS 18.1 and Apple intelligence first set of features, right? So I expect it to be the first or second week of December. Then Apple will continue to integrate more Apple intelligence features on supported devices with iOS 18.3 and 18.4 sometime next year with iOS 18.4. We're expecting major Siri upgrades with Siri 2.0. Maybe that will come a little bit earlier, but we're expecting much better integration. And it used to be the leader when it came to sort of digital intelligence and having an assistant. Then Google started to roll out their assistant and then Amazon Alexa and Siri fell behind. So hopefully this brings it right up to that level and then past it, but we'll have to wait and see, but we're expecting many more features and Apple to really focus on Apple intelligence going forward. We'll still get features on older devices, but Apple intelligence is Apple's focus. So let me know what you think of Apple intelligence so far, if you've used it with iOS 18.1 and what your favorite feature is in the second set of features. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.